Hi everyone, it's John from Money Sense. The first question we wanted to ask in our Money Matters series is, what role do the most financially secure citizens have in addressing wealth inequality? They can leverage their time. They can volunteer to organizations that are focusing on addressing the gaps that exist, be it mentorship, be it teaching financial literacy, or any other number of ways that you can support an organization in your community. Secondly, you can take your financial resources and you can pay that forward in supporting same organizations who are working to bridge the gap. And I think finally, we all have a voice when it comes to electing officials at every level of government. When we think about who we're gonna vote for, we should be looking at those politicians who are focused on the policies that will benefit all, because quite frankly, wealth should never be a partisan issue. I hope the role that financially secure citizens have in addressing wealth inequity is twofold. One, clearly they've done something right, and I hope they can share their personal insights, success stories, best practices to help educate others, provide stories where we can all learn from them. And I think the second is that I find most financially secure people are incredibly generous people, both with their money and their talents, and that they really do put a lot of help and care into the community. Financially secure citizens can help address wealth inequality by supporting small business. While it's convenient and economical to shop at big box stores, it doesn't address wealth inequality through the economy like patronizing a small business does. So, if you're able, buy from Canadian artists, order in from your local restaurants, outsource to family-run service businesses. The more financially secure can make more thoughtful spending choices that result in a more inclusive economy. We need to level up our leadership on multiple fronts to address the widening wealth gap. Uh, we need better policy setting. We need greater investments in our education programs, our education systems. And from a business executive perspective, we need better leadership and rethinking where do we recruit from, who do we recruit, and how do we deliberately build a more diverse pool of talent within our organizations. Encourage asset ownership opportunities as much as possible. For example, widespread employee stock options at your company might be a good option. So a person in a position of influence in a community or industry can significantly impact others' journey, either through financial literacy, mentorship and support, sharing their knowledge and providing guidance in areas of expertise, such as personal finance, building wealth, or even building a successful business. Another way is by making an impact is through charitable giving, one that aligns to one's personal values and experiences. Financially secure citizens have a very significant role to play. Healthy, resilient communities are an essential part of a strong economic and social fabric. And it's upon all of us to use our influence, the opportunities we've been given, and our knowledge to help our communities. As we've seen individuals struggle throughout the past year, it served as a good reminder that those that are able to must play an important role in their communities by giving back, either through financial support or with their time. And that's a responsibility we take very seriously at Scotiabank. That's part of the reason we were proud to launch Scotia Rise earlier this year, which is a 10-year, $500 million investment to promote economic resilience among disadvantaged groups.